so welcome everyone to our Meet the Team. And um, you know, just to give you all a little bit of background, we were doing these every month before COVID sort of threw a monkey wrench into a whole bunch of things. Um, and so it's been a little while since we have had a Meet the Team. And so I'm really excited that we are getting back into doing these. Um, and it's fun to have all of our team um, here. And uh, today we're going to have um, a couple of them to present and, and talk a little bit uh, for us. So this is a pretty interesting time to be having a baby. Um, a lot of people are anxious and stressed and you know, when we're having a baby, there's a lot of unknowns already. And that's one of the reasons why people look for a doula is to eliminate some of those unknowns. But right now with COVID, it's added another level of unknowns. And that is just creating a little bit more anxiety, a little bit more tension. And so we wanted to chat with you about some things that we can do to help make it through this. So we wanted to talk about things that will help you thrive throughout this time. So we will be talking about ways to de-stress. We'll also be talking about partners. So this is not only affecting our expecting parents, but it's also for the partners who are supporting them as well. Mm -hmm. We have some tips on how to set boundaries during this time and how to involve family. And this is a little bit challenging right now. Maybe your family doesn't live here, can't travel here, or maybe they do live here, but we're not sure how to keep everyone safe. So we'll be talking about that. How to stay connected is also really important. And we have some tips on how to keep that connection with the people who are important in your life. And we have some alternative baby shower ideas. So, you know, we have to think outside the box and we've got some fun baby shower ideas to chat about. So, first I'd like to introduce our um, speaker, Christiane. Uh, not to be confused with Christy, but Christiane. <laughs> Christiane is a birth and postpartum doula on our team, and she started her healthcare career at the age of 16. She's worked as a pharmacy tra uh, technician and a transplant coordinator. She's also a paramedic, which is very exciting. For fun, she loves to travel. I'm sure you've had to put this on hold for now, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to get back to that soon. And is a huge sports fan. So her favorite quote is, you are either succeeding or learning. I love that. So Christiane, I would love for you to take it away and talk to us about decreasing stress. Okay, welcome everyone. I'm Christiane, a birth and postpartum doula. Thank you very much, Christy. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm gonna talk about today is decreasing stress. So what, how I like to define stress is, um, like from a personal paraphrase, kind of like how I think of it as um, a troubling, stressful kind of a time where things, places, people, um, when they are inter twined with the ways that your life works. It can stress you out if it's not going the right way or if you put too much expectations. So when along with uh, stress, there's a definition of a stressor. So it's something, someone that causes a state of strain or tension. And I think every single person out here, I know for me, um, definitely stressors are big parts of my life. So when it comes to, um, you know, birth and postpartum, in regards to stressors, it can just, with the COVID situation, the stressors are through the roof. So along with um, the stressors go, can come along with anxiety and um, depression and mental health. So I think a big important thing for that is delegating tasks. 
and it can come as easy. Some of these ideas are really simple, but we don't think about them because we're stressed and there's so many other stressors that are coordinating along at the same time as this. So um, asking other children that we have, the older ones, you know, asking them for help. When people are visiting, we can ask them to, you know, do our washing, change our sheets, um, cutting the lawn, getting the mail. Like if you live in a building like myself, like I haven't checked the mail in a week. I'm like, I just don't, I just don't want to go down there. It's just, it's like a whole different world of leaving to get the mail. So I think delegating tasks is so important because people want to help you. They just don't know how. And when you're delegating, it's the way you present it can totally be very easy. Well, you know, you would really help me out if you could cut the lawn today, or you know what would really help me out? Take the kids to the park for an hour or just things like that that can be small for delegating tasks to help lower your stress because it's all the little things that build up because not only people, but something that can, you know, elevate the state of our tension in our life. So I think that's really important is for delegating tasks. And I really think that it'll help along with mental health, lowering anxiety, lowering depression, lowering pressure that we put on ourselves, which rolls me into self-care and self-compassion. Self-care and self-compassion are big, important, I should say words, they are. They're big, important roles in our lives. And there's so many different things when it comes to self-care and self-compassion that you can do. And I'm going to give another quick definition of self-compassion because there are definitely two or two different things. Self-compassion is being warm and understanding towards ourselves, being gentle, being nice, being kind, doing things like self-care. So self-compassion actually is what you're trying to achieve and you do it through self-care. And there's all different ways that you can do it through self-care. Um, you know, there's five minute things like take a breath, stretch your body, listen to your favorite song. Like I'm one of those cheesy people that like dances around my apartment because I'm feeling this new Justin Bieber song. Yeah, I said it. I admit it. And, um, you know, there's longer ones like a 15 minute meditation or read a chapter of your book. Just 15 minutes. You're like, I'm going to sit down and read my book. You know, these are things to de-stress. Or if you journal, there's all these wonderful journals that you can go out and get from the dollar store to Indigo. Um, I can just jot down things. It's also a really great way to vent and get those stressors out, you know? So it's like a personal connection between you and your journal. And definitely if you want something longer, like 30 minutes or so, you can take a walk outside, fresh air, or open the windows. We always think, oh, I can't, I can't, I have a new baby, I can't go outside or I, I already took the baby for 10 minutes and that was enough for the day, open the windows, bundle up that little bundle of joy, you know, and let that fresh air come in. And with self-care and self-compassion is staying connected too. Staying connected to, um, sometimes it can be overwhelming the news. So staying connected doesn't necessarily mean the news. It can be, you know, waving to a neighbor, and just seeing that there's other people out there or smiling at people as you walk by, but staying connected to your family and friends, you know, you just because they want to come over and you don't want them to, or you've got, you know, stressors around that, there's different ways you can still stay connected, a phone call, a text, um, you can go back to old fashioned writing, like the, the snail mail, like who isn't excited to get snail mail, you know? These, I know these things can take up time. That's why I ventured from the five minute to the 15 minute to the 30 minute. Um, but I think when I say back to basics too, that comes into the self-care and the self-compassion and lowering and decreasing our stress because back to basics is literally back to basics. Um, hunger, shout, what do I have? Sorry, I'm just going to check my notes really quick here. Um, so, you know, like it comes back to making sure that you're eating. Like first people say, yeah, you know, when you just have a baby or you're pregnant, make sure to have good nutrition. Hey, I just go back to, especially if you've got other kids, eating, just eating. And then you can venture into the healthy nutritional side, which I think is really important um, when it comes to pregnancy and postpartum as well. And showering, taking that extra time to have the extra long shower, sitting in the shower, changing your sheets, doing the laundry, like some of these things, if you, 
if you just have in the mindset of this is going to be a task that I'm not going to stress about, I'm not, I'm going to clear my mind and I'm just going to do the task at hand. So the back to basics and, you know, sleeping, as we know, sleeping is very important. You want to try to sleep. Um, you know, you want to try to sleep when you can. Obviously, there's all the different stressors that come into that, but sleep will actually decrease your anxiety, decrease depression, help mental health, um, and just overall make you feel better. And it'll make you want to eat more. It'll make you want to have more energy. Um, I know that uh, sleep can be a struggle, but um, that's definitely a way to decrease stress. And just last, I just want to say um, just you know, set some boundaries and we're going to go more into that later on and how to do that. But decreasing stress, setting boundaries can definitely de decrease stress, but I'll, I'll let Larry and go in more to that. And focusing on manageability, like we know it's not realistic to do all the things I said about self-care or all the things I said about self-compassion. Just starting off by being nice to yourself. I think that's really, really important. And trying to be warm to ourselves and giving ourselves a pat on the back. As cheesy as this is, there's actually studies about this. Stopping and giving yourself a, or your partner giving you a pat on the back or you giving your partner a pat on the back. And literally there's studies shown that that actually can decrease stress. So I hope I was able to touch on a few things for people and, um, you know, answer some questions. If you have any questions later on about stress, I'm definitely the girl to hit up. Um, and I can tell you more about the self-care and self-compassion options. So with that, I'm going to pass and thank you very much. Thank you, Christiane. That was so great. And I know that I need to listen to some of your suggestions as well. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'd like to introduce Seemal. Uh, she has an interest in, in understanding human relationships at a deeper level. I think that's pretty awesome. Um, also believes it is important for all parents to have a pillar of unbiased support and encouragement. And that's absolutely true. And we believe that wholeheartedly. And she does this as a postpartum doula all the time. <laughs> uh, Sibal is a mom of two daughters and loves traveling, movies, and concerts. Uh, unfortunately, there's probably not a lot of that happening right now either. <laughs> Seamal's favorite quote is, be yourself, everyone else is already taken, which is true. So Seamal, I would love for you to take it away and talk to us about our partners and what they're going through right now. Yes, absolutely. So I was actually really excited to be able to speak about partners because I know that when I became a doula, that was one of the biggest surprises when I was entering people's homes was how involved partners wanted to be and they just didn't know what to do. They want to be there, they're willing to help, but how can we help? Um, so the first thing that I wanted to touch on was how you can be proactive, especially right now, um, because most um, assuming that most partners are at home and they are going to be potentially the only other person at home with the birth and parent once the baby comes. So how can you be proactive now and get things ready? Um, number one, in my opinion, really is just to think about refocusing your priorities. Um, Non-essential activities now don't really matter. You know, your role is going to change and your primary role is going to be that you are going to be a parent, especially if this is baby number one. Um, you know, don't underestimate little things that can help. Whatever you can do at, help, um, at home, just like Christiane was saying, like laundry and meal prep, um, you know, making sure that there is a meal for your pregnant partner and partner who just had the baby. These little things actually go a long way. And sometimes doing it without being asked really goes a long way. So, you know, these can help you at home to keep your um, birthing partner also calm and not having to do extra as well. That really helps. Um, one thing I love to tell partners is don't wait for the baby to come to learn how to use things at home. So if you guys have baby carriers, sterilizers, humidifiers, strollers, car seats already bought, learn how to use all of these things. You can help your partner figure out how to use the breast pump before the baby comes and try it. Because I've been in so many situations where you have mom wants to use the breast pump, baby is screaming, now let's get the breast pump put together. All of these things can be done beforehand and ready to go, especially if now 
baby's coming and we don't have grandma or um, you know the mother-in-law coming to help and we're home on our own just the two of us it's nice to have all of these things already done so you can just get to it you know blackout curtains is a big one I've seen people going crazy trying to get the blackout curtains up after babies come you can do it months before there's not an issue so these are kind of ways to be proactive and get everything done a little bit organized beforehand so that when the baby does come you have the time to be there for the birthing parent and the baby and you don't have to worry about these things which really don't seem uh, that important but they're already they're already taken care of um, one thing I love to suggest to partners is practicing putting on onesies. You can do this without a baby. It's awesome and you won't have that problem <laughs> once the baby comes and you don't know how to close the buttons on the onesie. Um, baby carriers is also something you can practice putting on before your baby comes and these are things that sometimes can be difficult. So if you can get practicing now, once the baby comes, babies love to be carried and that's something that you can help in so much at home mom can be sleeping for an hour and you can carry the baby and you'll be doing great. Um, another thing I was going to suggest was checking if you are having a baby in the hospital, checking about the in and out privileges um, right now during COVID births. All the hospitals have different policies. Um, I've had some parents who didn't know that once they're in, they can't leave, um, which is what it used to be like when we had kids in the hospitals. We can come and go, you can go home and shower and then come back to be with your wife. A lot of them now are you come in and you stay in. So find out, ask these questions beforehand so that you're prepared and there's no major surprises once you do go into the hospital to have the baby. Um, I guess next what I'd want to touch on is being involved. Um, so in person and then definitely virtually. Um, one of my models, which I always say to partners is try, try, try some more. Don't give up. Moms are new to these things. Dads are new to these things. Partners are new to these things. Just because somebody's birthed a baby does not know that they know how to bathe the baby. So it goes the same way for both parents. Just don't give up. Change the diaper, didn't work out, change it again. You tried to birth the baby, took you half an hour, keep trying. Just don't give up because the more you do it, it will become a second nature and you will actually get really, really good at it. And you'll be able to show off to everybody how good you are at doing these things. Um, it's your role now at home most possibly because you won't be having other help in there to take on as much as you can to help out. So, um, you know, I, we have all the to do our services. Not everybody is willing now to have people come into their homes, but you can do prenatal classes online virtually. You can have postpartum support virtually. So if you guys are not so convinced right now about having somebody in, do the research now to find out how can you get the help and do you want to get the help afterwards so that you are prepared that if you do need it, you can contact somebody as opposed to having the baby and then trying to find someone um, that you might possibly need to come and, and help you out, be it in person or um, online. If you can't go to a doctor's appointment switch now, which I know is not fun, my sister is pregnant and her husband's upset that he can never go <laughs> to the prenatal appointments or the ultrasounds, a lot of doctors are being very accommodating. So check with the doctor. You can have your partner check when they go in that is it okay if I we video chat? Can he be on the phone when we're listening to the heartbeat? Can he ask questions as well? There are ways to be involved. I think you just have to ask um, when you go in and just see what people are comfortable doing. It's, it's, I think a lot of people are feeling left out right now. So just ask the questions and see if there you know, is a way for you to be involved in there. Um, and ask questions to your partner when they get home if they couldn't be involved, right? Show that you are interested because, you know, like you are missing out a little bit if you can't go in, but it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. You know, you can still ask questions. You can still find out the information. Um, let me see. So I guess the last thing I wanted to talk about was the added worries and pressures for partners right now, especially partners who are going to be the only one at home um, helping I know that I had a huge support system. You know, you have the parents and the grandparents. Now, grandparents are not coming over at all because my kids are in school too. So, you know, things change. Um, it's completely normal for partners right now to feel nervous and to feel worried. You might feel like everything is going to be on your shoulders. But I feel like it goes back to the first point of being proactive. Make a list of people that you are comfortable asking for help. Like Christiane said, people want to help you. You just have to ask them. Not everybody's always willing to offer it, but that doesn't mean that they don't want to help you. How you have a support system, so it might not be in home, but you you can have friends and family that are willing to drop off a coffee, you know, for 
mom every morning, somebody who's going to drop to um, deliver groceries, you can pre-plan meal services, you know, you don't have to be the chef and the cleaner and everybody at home because it's your main priority to help your partner and to be there with the baby. Um, you're not alone. There are two of you at home. So you can speak to your partner also about how you're feeling. I find that when couples are actually communicating, even when they're both having a hard time, that actually helps a lot because you're letting each other know that maybe we do need help. Uh, maybe we do need to call on someone. You know, the virus is this whole pandemic it's not the end of the baby's story. It's the beginning of the baby's story. And it's the beginning of your story as a parent. So it's an interesting beginning to the story, but the story continues, you know? And right now there's this huge coin frames about pandemic papas everywhere around the world, like all these dads and babies and they're, you know, actually loving the fact that they get to spend this much time. So think of it in as a positive way that you might not have had this time initially if we didn't have coronavirus to be spending this much time with your pregnant partner and then your soon to come baby so enjoy it embrace it and you know just find find ways that you can get help if you do need the help and i really encourage you to do this before the baby comes so that you don't have that stress uh, afterwards so yeah i think that's everything i want to say on partners thank you female that was great okay. and thank you for the suggestion of asking the doctor if you can connect the partner in prenatally, because I know a lot of our clients right now are talking about that and they're talking about how partners are really disappointed that they can't yeah. be there for that visit with the first heartbeat and things like that. And it's amazing that, that why not, why not have your partner there, just not quite there. And um, it depends on the doctor, it depends on the lab tech. That's why I say, just ask them beforehand. I know some lab technicians that have been letting um, the moms videotape the ultrasounds. I don't know if it's allowed or not, but they're like, don't worry about it. Just do it. Cause you know, they want to be able to have their partner be involved. So just ask the questions. Don't be afraid to ask if it's a no, it's a no, but it might be a yes. Right. So, <laughs> and you never know unless you ask. So yeah. thank you. That was, that was great. So next we have Larry Ann, who is a birth and postpartum doula on our team. Larry Ann has a keen interest in maternal mental health. I strongly believes in the importance of community, um, which we believe as well. Uh, we also have um, a mom of four, busy, busy lady, a Marvel fan and loves to make organic skincare in her spare time. So what I want to know is with, um, with four children, how much spare time do you have to make organic skincare? That's my um. <laughs> Very little. I'm always very, very busy. Um, but when I can squeeze it in, I kind of turn them into little helpers and then it's a fun Oh, part. smart, smart. And your favorite um, quote is when you get a chance to dance it out or sit it out, I hope you dance. And I would definitely agree with that as, uh, as a dancer. So Larianne, take it away and tell us all about main, maintaining boundaries during this time. Um, so I think this is a big one where a lot of new and experienced parents may have a bit of anxiety. On a regular day, it's hard to create and then enforce boundaries. And then you throw in a pandemic and it kind of heightens it and makes it even more crazy than it would normally be. Um, so I think the best place to start is to start early. So before you give birth, um, just kind of have conversations with the people in your network, um, your partners, your family, your friends, and kind of lay out what you want and what you don't want. And once you start the conversations early, it's going to take the anxiety and the pressure off of having to have these conversations after you birthed baby and brought baby home. Um, and it's just one less, one less thing to think about at that time. And you won't have to continuously explain yourself because your friends and your family are already going to know what to expect of you. Um, the next thing I think that is really important is to create a list of non-negotiables and a list of what your priorities are. So your non-negotiables should reflect, reflect all aspects of your journey. So through pregnancy, um, straight through to, through to postpartum um, and kind of outlining what you want it to look like when baby comes home. Um, do you want people to be posting pictures of baby on social media right now? Do you want visitors? If you have visitors, do you want them to wear masks? Do you want to ask them to do a COVID test? And again, kind of thinking these things through and putting them down on paper lays it out so that you're not scrambling and trying to figure out what you want to do after baby has been 
born or what you want to do while you're giving birth because there's times when you're giving birth and then your phone is blowing up and people's like is baby here yet is baby here yet and like you don't want to be thinking about that your partner doesn't want to be thinking about that when you're going through labor um so if you kind of let your friends and family know like hey i will contact you when i'm ready then they just have to sit tight um another thing you want to do is get comfy with saying the word no um the word no is not a bad word it's an essential word you should say it and say it confidently um this is great for great communication and it helps you basically communicate your feelings. Um, it allows people to know that you mean what you mean business. So it shouldn't be a kind of like a, uh, no, it should just be no. It's a full sentence um, and you're not responsible for how people interpret it. Um, that's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is protecting your space and your energy and creating somewhere, a space that's healthy for you to bond and to recover after you go through labor. Um, and Seema brought up some great points about partners. And at this time, you really want to lean into your partner as well. So the things that you've put on your non-negotiable list, if you're not naturally a person who likes to say no or who is confrontational, or if you just don't want to be the one to have that conversation, pass it off to your partner, to your doula, your support person, whoever it is, that list will be there so they can refer to it and say, no, this isn't something that we're able to facilitate at this time or we're not comfortable doing it so that you can focus on things that are more important. And the last point I want to bring up is don't feel guilty. Um, guilt is something that kind of sneaks into all aspects of our lives because most times we're really worried about how other people are interpreting what we're saying or um, we're worried about how they're going to feel. But again, you're not really responsible for how people interpret what you say or what you do, as long as it's respectful. Um, and you always need to do what's right for you, yourself, your family, and your baby. So just be confident in that and rest assured that you're making the right decisions for your situation. And that's it. Thank you so much, Larianne. That was, uh, that was awesome. And again, so many important reminders on uh, things that we need to keep, keep in mind during this time. And saying no is definitely hard for me. <laughs> I don't think I'm alone with that one, but thank you so much. So now I'd like to introduce Sarah. Sarah is a postpartum doula on our team and believes every woman deserves to be supported and cared for after birth. She wants to help families not only survive, but thrive after becoming parents. She is um, traveled to 10 countries. I am jealous of, of you, Sarah, and loves to snowboard and eat leftovers for breakfast. I like that too. Um, and the, your favorite quote is one day at a time. I like that. So Sarah, would you tell us how to involve family during this time? Sure. So this topic kind of came natural to me because previous to my role as a doula, I actually went to chef school. So I thought, hey, why don't I talk all about the most practical thing that you need before and really after birth is what I'm going to touch on is food. So this is one way that family and friends can help. So the first thing is dropping off food with no pressure to visit. Sometimes I think we can find with family and friends, this is kind of their avenue in to get in to see the baby, but you don't have to have people come into your home. You can kind of say, you know what, if you can drop off a meal or a coffee at the door, that would be great. We're not accepting visitors right now and just be really clear with it. And grocery delivery is also a really good one that, friends or family that aren't close by, they can kind of just do an order for you and they can maybe think of items that are not just meals. They can get breakfast items or lunch things or um, anything that you want. And it's really about us as new parents allowing family to kind of do this for us because often family and friends are saying, how can I help? Let me know if you need anything. And I think other ladies have touched on this already that we kind of need to speak up when people are saying that to us, we need to allow them to help. And it can be really overwhelming because when people bring these questions to you, friends and family, this is why I'm saying these things now, have an idea of what you're gonna say back. Say, yes, that would be great. 
You can drop off coffee. You can get takeout. We really love Thai food. Um, make a list of things around your house once baby comes that you see are running low and you can kind of think, oh, we, we're running out of diapers. Yeah, could you grab me some diapers? And also just being specific on things that you actually prefer. Don't be afraid to say, actually, we don't want a lasagna tonight. We would really love avocado toast or whatever it is, but kind of just allowing family to be there for you and having an answer to respond back. And that can be yes when it comes to food. And the next section I wanted to talk about was when family does come over. So this is depending on everybody's comfort level. If you are going to be having family and friends into your home, and if you are allowing them to come in, let them hold the baby when they come in so that you can eat, shower, and rest. Because once the baby is here, you're going to have very limited times to actually do those things. So another point is that sometimes doing those things actually can bring back a sense of normal when you're breastfeeding in the beginning. If you're breastfeeding, you're constantly having the baby on you. So if someone comes, if they can just take the baby from you and you can actually do something else, sometimes it's nice to just do some dishes or just to eat in peace for a minute, which is a luxury that you don't realize that you have until it's gone. So just allow people to take the baby and allow you to just do those basic function needs. And another thing I came up with was have family or friends or even for yourself or a partner prepare high nutrient snack ideas that you can quickly grab and go as you're breastfeeding and you just need a quick snack along with lots of water because you're going to be really hungry as you're uh, feeding and providing all these nutrients to new baby. So here's my ideas. Lactation cookies, energy balls, nuts or trail mix, smoothies, hard boiled eggs, Greek yogurt parfaits, and hummus and veggies. Now, when family um, does come, you need to be really clear, as Larry Ann said, about what your preferences are and what makes you comfortable. So if it's masks, or if you want them to be COVID tested, if you want them to quarantine before the visit, if you want them to wash their hands, you know, before they after they've touched their phone or after they've eaten, it's really important that you're just clear and every family is gonna be different on this. So for example, you could say, we would love a visit and we're just asking that all visitors wear a mask. Or if you don't want people in your home, you could say, we would appreciate a visit maybe in our backyard. I know it's getting colder now, but, um, and then if you don't want anyone in your home, you could say something like, we're not having visitors, but we would love a FaceTime. So these are just little ideas, but this one's really gonna come down to your own comfort level. And don't be afraid to speak up and be bold about what you want, because that's the last thing you wanna be doing is worrying when someone's there and your stress levels and your panic levels are going up. Just be clear and say a statement like that. And that's totally fine. You're totally empowered to do that. It's your choice and it's your baby. And finally, I want to talk about our support as postpartum doulas. So we can be there when family is not able to be there and we can provide either virtual support or we can actually provide in-person support as well. So this is kind of on the job training. I know for myself, I learn by watching. And so if you have one of us postpartum doulas come in, even let's say for a four hour shift, you can learn a whole bunch just by watching the ways that we soothe the baby, bathe the baby, help with breastfeeding or little ways, just tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. I've heard a lot of clients say, oh, we learned this from you. We picked this up. We know how to do it now because you did it. So it's even if you just do a four hour shift with us, it could actually teach you a lot. And we can also offer long-term support because once these first couple weeks and months kind of peter out, the help and the excitement and the hype dies down, sometimes you're still just really tired or you're running into issues. And so we as postpartum doulas can be there to support you along your whole journey into this postpartum period, which is really the whole first year of you know, having a new baby. So we can be there anywhere along the line, even let's say, six months in, you really need a, a good night of sleep. We can come and do an overnight. So, you know, our postpartum doula support is kind of custom made for whatever you need. On to the next doula. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. That was, um, it's really important to have family um, and have them involved, but also 
to communicate and to be very clear. And so you gave some really great suggestions on how to do that. So now I'd like to introduce Tanisha, who is a birth and postpartum doula on our team. She is fiercely passionate about social issues, especially in regards to women. She has led uh, women's health seminars, which is pretty neat. Um, she loves to travel and has worked with families in Italy and Spain and has volunteered in Germany, uh, Ukraine, and India. There's a lot of travelers on our team, I uh, realize. Um, your favorite quote is, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And I agree, because I think that we are definitely a committed group of citizens. Uh, so Tanisha, I would love for you to take it away and share with us how to stay connected, which I know I'm struggling with during this, this time. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Christy. And everyone on our team has given such amazing information. Um, and I think, you know, that quote that, I sh that Christy shared is so important because it really is, even just our small communities, like can make a huge difference in our own lives. Um, so really we're looking at why should we stay connected? I mean, on a physiologic, sociological level, we as humans are wired to be connected. We are wired for community. Community is immunity. Of course, it looks a little bit differently right now, but we're gonna talk about some creative ways that you can do this safely, but also within the boundaries that you've set. You know, the partners and the people that are closest in our social bubble can really be that gatekeeper or the the bodyguards of your time and your space so maybe you thought before covid you really wanted a lot of help and a lot of support and now you've kind of been forced to narrow down that support to a small group of really committed people which can be a really beautiful thing right and they feel very um, involved and committed and part of your new parent process or maybe you were one of those folks and families who did not want anyone coming over and this is kind of a really nice gift where you can kind of use this as a reason to maintain a nest of protection um, around your new family. So I know a lot of us may be Zoomed out right now um, with all the Zoom meetings for work and whatnot, but really it can be one of the safest and most effective ways. I mean, I've seen a lot of families plug the computer into their big TV so they can see everyone even better. Um, I've even seen some families use different tripods and whatnot to hold up the phone so that instead of holding the phone awkwardly with baby, you can just have it stabilized and, you know, can show the baby that way. And you can still use your hands, you can still feed, you can still breastfeed, you can still eat. But, um, you know, family members who are on that Zoom call or that FaceTime call can still be connected and see baby and all of you really well. I also really love the idea of group chats, you know, one quick text and this side of the family has all the updates, that side of the family has all the updates, and you don't have to be doing individual calls or messages, which takes up a lot of time. Um, and I'm gonna leave the baby shower idea to Rhiannon, but one thing that I've been talking a lot with my clients recently is a Zoom sip and see. So I don't know if you've ever heard of a sip and see, but a lot of people would do this once the baby's born, have a, a day event, kind of like a baby shower, but now the baby's here, you come for the day, you grab some champagne or uh, non-alcoholic drinks and everybody comes to see the baby and sip something. But you can do that virtually now. Everybody, a couple weeks after you're feeling more recovered, you can even send out little gifts um, or you know, a recipe for a specific drink that everybody makes on the same time at the same day. Make it fun. You know, the money that you would have spent maybe on a venue or food from ever, for everyone being catered can now be spent on sending cards and whatnot to your family and friends. And lastly, I want to say that as much as connection is important with everyone around us, it's also so important to disconnect and really utilize the time, the gift that we're given in some ways um, for this whole pandemic to really focus in on the connection for yourself, focus in on the connection with your baby, with your partner, with your other children, if you have, um, without the distraction of having to feel the need to stay connected to everyone else. So based on what your family's goals are, pick and choose what works for you and set those boundaries like Larry, Larry Ann said, do the prep work like all of my other team members have said so that you can really just have peace of mind and just start this journey of parenthood on the right foot. Thank you, Tanisha. And I love the idea of connecting your computer to the TV. That is brilliant because 
I don't know how many times I have had too many people on my screen and they're like this big. And so, you know, it would be so nice to be able to see them, you know, a lot better. So that's a fabulous idea. Thank you so much. So I would love to introduce Rhiannon, who is a birth and postpartum doula on our team. She has a keen interest in maternal mental health and um, believes in um, the importance of community as well. Enjoys a good cup of matcha while watching HGTV. Um, I'm curious what your garden looks like, Rhiannon and loves to cuddle with her puppy niece, Winnie the Wheaton. Oh, I love puppies. And I love this quote, even in the chaos, don't forget to kiss. I like that. And Rhiannon, and I'm excited for your, um, your topic to give us some ideas on fun baby shower ideas. Um, you know, that uh, would be really helpful in this time when people are, trying to connect, but they're not sure how. So take it away. Well, thank you for the introduction, Christy. Uh, so I understand that there's a lot of things to be grieving right now in your COVID pregnancies and the in-person baby shower might seem like a trivial thing, but it's a really real feeling of loss for a lot of people. And I just wanna say, you don't have to completely get rid of the baby shower. There are a lot of virtual and creative things that you can do to still have that feeling of connection and celebration. Uh, so my first idea I want to share, want to tap into the spiritual side. And so uh, what a mother blessing is, is that it's more focused on um, sharing wisdom and honoring the mother, the parent to be rather than focusing on the material things or just the baby. Uh, so there's a lot of special activities that you can do, such as everyone going around in a circle virtually, of course, and uh, sharing a special prayer or poem or piece of wisdom about parenting. Um, and that way, everyone gets a chance to participate. Um, another tradition that happens within the, the blessing way is that everyone gets a candle sent. So you can send little goodie bags to all of your virtual guests. And then when you go into labor, someone will text everyone um, that's attended and they'll light the candle and say something, a special thought, and the candle will burn um, as a, a special tribute to what's going on. So you can think of a lot of creative ideas that around celebrating you in this transition of life uh, rather than focusing on the traditional baby shower games um, and make the most of having to be creative because of the COVID challenges that, that come along with this, this time. Uh, so other things to, to think about is a, having a drive-by shower or through a window, uh, whatever your boundaries are, um, you're allowed to say, hey, maybe no in-person or outdoor events for me personally, but if you still want to come by in person um, and have that physical presence, doing a drive-by is a really great idea. You might have seen some viral Facebook videos recently of some drive-by events and people can decorate their cars and honk their horns and uh, just show their support um, loud and colorfully just from their cars, that's totally allowed too. Uh, and, and that way there's also an end time, which is kind of nice. You don't have people gathering for who knows how long, you know that it's just gonna take a couple of minutes. Um, and then you can and just give everyone a call, thank you afterwards, um, but you still get your chance to, to feel celebrated in a short and efficient time frame that respects your boundaries. Um, if you are doing a virtual baby shower, there are a lot of games and activities that you can do. Um, I would recommend starting by looking online 
for some PDF printables for all of your guests to, to download. Um, the website Baby List has some really good ones right now. Uh, so you can say things like, um, everyone do a crossword right now, or fill in the blanks, or word jumbles, it's the types of things that you would do at an in-person baby shower, um, but everyone can have their own printout and, and participate in the same activities uh, virtually, which is a lot of fun. Um, I've also done a lot of fun um, virtual games through online platforms recently with my friends and you can still do that with a baby shower. So there's a platform called Jackbox that have a lot of fun adult games, uh, different services like that or the Netflix party app on your phone. You can all watch a movie together. There's lots of different things that you can do uh, to participate in that fun jovial element of a baby shower online. Um, and as Tanisha mentioned, if having a baby shower um, is a lot to plan right now, you can also plan to have a sip and see afterwards. And that way you're also able to defer to maybe this will magically uh, improve the situation in the world. And in a couple of months, maybe you'll be able to get together outside or in your party room or in your apartment building or in your house or whatever it is. Um, just having that option to defer it to later when it's less stressful is, is a nice way to um, still enjoy the celebrations when the time is right for you. Uh, and when you are planning your baby shower, um, one important element is the registry. So there are a lot of really great platforms out there. Uh, just Google online virtual baby registry and there's a lot of services you can do. You don't have to go to a store in person, um, but you can go to a website and that way you can collect registry items from a bunch of different online stores, not just Babies R Us or the typical stores that you would go and, and scan things on the registry. Uh, but another benefit of having a virtual registry is that you can also ask for services. Uh, like the same way if it's a wedding registry and some people are registering for fun activities for their honeymoon rather than just the items, you can do the exact same thing for your baby shower and register for services like pelvic floor physio or postpartum doula services. There are so many things you can ask for that are outside of the box um, that are virtual services too. And so you can still maintain that network of support and receive gifts that you're actually going to use during this time. And you don't necessarily need to focus on having the 10,000th onesie that gets sent in a typical baby shower anyways. Uh, so be creative, ask for things that you really need um, and would enjoy and be totally comfortable with asking for things that are about you and not necessarily just about baby because this is a, a time where you need to be supported and the family as a whole needs to be supported and you are absolutely allowed to, to request support in however you see fit. Thank you, Rhiannon. Those are some really great ideas. And um, the virtual registry, registry is great because how many times in the past has it been just one store and you have to choose certain things from that one place. But maybe you want a certain pillow from one place and you want your breast pump from another place. And services are really important. A lot of people are looking for those types of things now. So, you know, how great is it to have a, a dinner delivered um, or have um, a night of sleep from a postpartum doula. So, you know, it's, uh, it's great. And thanks for opening our minds to all of these fun, fun ways we can still party even though we can't be in the same room together. So thank you so much. So that is um, the end of our presentation for um, the different topics, but we also wanted to give some time for questions. So I would love to, um, to kind of open it up to the guests that we have here. We have more team members than the ones that spoke today. If all of our team members spoke, we would be here till midnight, um, which I would enjoy, but everybody else would want to sleep. So, um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and, and ask if you feel comfortable. 
And if you'd like, uh, you can also just chat in the chat box. You can put your question there uh, and we will sort of jump in any of our doula team members who are on, um, on the line. If you would like to just, you know, jump in to answer any of the questions that come in, please feel free to do so. So do we have any questions? I know there were a few of you in the beginning who um, were wondering about different things. So. Um, I have a question. It's Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Hi. Are you guys still then attending things in person yourselves, even if so? So you're, are you still able to um, attend births, I guess, and all of that stuff? Or are you doing that stuff virtually? I don't know if that's a weird question or not, because I know not at all. some of this is limited. Yeah. Does one of the birth doulas on the team want to talk about some of the, uh, the birth services? Anybody want to jump in? Because I can talk, but I talk all the time. Sorry, I was trying to figure out how to unmute myself. This is Jessica. Hi, Caitlin. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm great. Nice to see you. Hi. Nice to, nice to hear you. <laughs> so we are able to provide in-person support where hospital policies allow, and we're seeing that they're all changing at different times. Um, but it also depends on the number of support people that you have. So I know that you have a partner. Um, right now it's one support person at many hospitals. There's just a handful that are allowing one support person plus a doula. So we have in-person packages, we have combination packages, and then we have virtual care. So it's almost like dial a doula, all that great aspect of our group chat support, helping with early labor before heading to the hospital and helping to walk you through with that informational support and the emotional care, um, just like this, FaceTime and phone calls and really just a text message away. Yeah. So I okay. would love to chat with you a little bit more in depth about what that would mean for you. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you so much. I'm loving, the I'm loving the virtual birth support. I find it is amazing working more closely with the partners and really um, giving them the tools to pro provide the support. So we're basically their memory <laughs> when they forget the next position to try or the next massage technique to use. Um, and also just different questions to ask the hospital staff when they come in for the medical exams. So it's a different support. It's not taking what we used to do and and just doing it over the phone or, or over video, it is a different support, but it's actually a really amazing support. So I'm liking it. But thanks for that question. Hi everyone, this is Austin. So my, my question is actually in regards to the postpartum support. Um, so can you speak a bit about the precautions that are being taken if, uh, if you're coming into uh, homes to provide support? Like, is it masks? Is it um, quarantine beforehand? Yeah. Uh, are COVID tests being done? Like what kind of uh, supports or what kind of precautions are being taken uh, for the in-person support postpartum? Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to jump in with that? I can also help answer. Any of our postpartum doulas? So, you know, it is challenging um, with knowing what protocols to put into place uh, because there is no governing body for doulas. So a lot of what we've been doing is modeling the precautions and suggestions from other regulated health professionals. So what are the chiropractors doing? What are the massage therapists doing? Um, because they have a governing body who uh, will give them the guidance. So what is suggested is always asking those COVID questions that we could probably all recite in our sleep now. So do you have a fever? Um, how are you feeling today? Do you have any shakes or chills? Um, you know, we have those questions that we go through with each of our clients. Um, we ask anyone who has traveled or been around someone who's traveled. And also um, if you have tested positive, ever tested positive for COVID or been um, in contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID. So those are the questions that are pre-screening questions and they're asked all of our clients before every shift. 
Uh, we also go through those questions ourselves as doulas before we interact with any of our clients. So how are we feeling? Uh, have we been in touch with anyone who has um, tested positive for COVID or traveled? So if there were any yes answers to those questions on both sides. Obviously, the shift would be um, either rescheduled, a different doula would come, um, and if it was the family that answered yes to any of those questions, then we would uh, cancel the support. Now, because sometimes this happens last minute, we don't have any the normal restrictions on when you can cancel your support shifts. So, you know, typically you need to give 48 hours before you cancel a shift. But under these circumstances, we don't want families to have a doula come if they're not feeling well just because they're concerned about losing the hours or, or something like that. So we have waived that during this time. Um, our doulas are wearing masks and we do ask that anyone who is in the room with the doula uh, that they wear masks as well. So, you know, if, if you're going to be um, in the room for a short time and then you leave, then you can take, take the mask off. Uh, but, you know, we, if you're in the same room, um, then both should be wearing a mask. And hand washing has always been something important to doulas. So this wasn't a surprise or a change for any other doulas on our team. Um, I think it was probably a, a relief to all of us that people were talking about proper hand washing protocols, uh, finally. Uh, so, you know, we're always making sure that our hands are clean, that any time um, that we're in contact with the baby, um, that our hands are washed beforehand um, and uh, and that was something that we always did uh, before as well so those are some of the things that we're doing uh, we are not um, quarantining for for two weeks or um, or taking COVID tests the challenge with those things is that it doesn't necessarily mean that like you could have a test done today get the results um, three days from now and you know, if you're not careful, you can be in contact with someone with COVID and, and get it. So it gives a false sense of security. Um, it's better that we're all being careful every day in all of our interactions. So that's something that we're, we're more focused on instead of like, oh, I had a test two weeks ago, I'm fine. It's not quite the same. So if you'd like to talk a little bit more about, about that, or if you have special circumstances um, in your situation that you'd like to discuss, um, you know, please feel free to chat with one of us um, and we can answer more questions or, um, or give more information. Does that help, Austin? Yeah, that's very helpful. We can absolutely take it offline. Oh, great. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much, um, everyone who was able to join us today. 